my beautiful lovelies, it's Emmy. Welcome back. I have a special guest with me. It is my brother, We, and we are doing another edition of We and The Cook, and we are going to cook what? We're going to cook uh, Momofuku's, or David Chang's interpretation of a Korean dish called Bo Song. And this is a dish. This is a dish my brother has been telling me about for a long time, and we finally got together for New Year's. Happy New Year's, everybody. And Happy New Year. This is a crowd pleaser, and it's one that you tell me when you make this. You've made it many yeah, times. Yeah, a, a few times. So this is a, we're actually this is kind of a functional thing because we're gonna actually the whole point of making this was for our get together uh, on this trip, and yes, it's kind of replacement, it's kind of like the go-to dish for me in terms of like cooking a reliable, you know, uh, hearty meal that will you know feed eight plus people. So here we are today. We're gonna make bosam or posam. Yeah, I think it's posam. I heard it from my friend Brad. Big shout out to my friend Brad who told me about this recipe. Hi, Brad! It's traditionally a Korean dish. Uh, that's where you have pork belly or pork neck, like a fatty uh, pork, where it's boiled, sliced, and eaten as a wrap with lettuce and different condiments. I want to see if it lives up to my sister's fine, sophisticated palate. <laughs> I do! I do hear a little bit of snark! Just a little bit of snark. That's cool. That's cool. This is my little brother after mm -hmm. all. But I've never actually eaten at Momofuku, which is the famous David Chang. Now at this point, he has many, many restaurants, but I've never mm -hmm. eaten at the OG or any of his others. I think there's Po and some others. Yeah, but a whole bunch. Someday I will. Someday I will. But until then, we're going to have to make Momofuku come into our own kitchen and make it ourselves. So Bosam or Posam requires a bit of time, doesn't it? Yeah, so you start out with a big pork shoulder, um, like a pork butt or a Boston butt, and usually it's like eight to 10 pounds, and right. you just take equal parts sugar and salt, and mix those together, um, and then coat your uh, big piece of pork. Cover it with pasta wrap, put it in our fridge, um, so that it's ready today uh, to cook in the oven. I'll put a recipe link down below to the original recipe in case you are interested. So once we have our pork butt brined, I guess it's brine. Is it considered yeah, a, dry, a brine? Yeah, I think a dry brine is what they call it. Okay, but. dry brine because it's not actually submerged in anything, but it is salt and sugar. And that pulls out a lot of the juices out of the meat, right? And it'll mm -hmm. make it kind of caramelize better from my understanding. Yeah, it helps kind of intensify the flavor. You're both getting kind of seasoning the meat while also allowing some of the moisture to come out to get you a good crust when you eventually break it, bake it. We like science in this family. Mm -hmm. Science is cool. Okay, so then after, <laughs> So after we've brined it, now what do we do? So then, uh, after you brine it, you, you pour out the extra, ju all the juice that accumulates because all the salt pulls out juices. Right. You, you dump that out and then you preheat your oven, you put that in a preheated 300 degree oven um, and you just let it cook. Eight to 10 pound piece of meat, it usually takes, they say approximately six plus hours and just to the point where the meat's really soft and pulling off the bone. House smells amazing, by the way. I came in, I'm like, oh my gosh, it smells mm -hmm. like bacon, but sweet. Sweet and um, yeah, just yummy. Okay, so low temperature, relatively low temperature, and for a long time. Mm -hmm. So we're taking low a page out of barbecue here, doing low and slow, but we're doing inside. So it's winter time here, and this is going to be ideal because it warms up your house too. So mm. we are now at the stage at which we, we cook the bosom completely, and now we're going to wrap things up by doing what? Yeah, so we take it out now. Uh, yeah. It's been resting for about an hour now. Um, I can go grab it. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Alrighty, so what are you mixing up? So this is uh, the final kind of coating. It's almost like a creme brulee effect to this bosom. Uh, seven tablespoons of brown sugar and uh, one tablespoon of kosher salt. Help me out. Ugh, must I? Ooh, I like the feeling of brown sugar, like crumbling in your fingers. It's like that. It's like wet sand. It is. It's like kinetic sand. A kinetic sand. Let's see. We're parents. Parents. Yes. The oven is actually preheated right now at 500. Okay. And you throw it in there. It says 10 to 15 minutes, but it's really that could long? be even less. Just wait until you see the thing is bubbling. So we're gonna make the sauces. Okay. So first we'll make the kind of traditional sam sauce. First you have gochujang. It's used in a lot of Korean cookery. I love it. It's really, really tasty stuff. Actually, this was the gochujang. One tablespoon of gochujang, two tablespoons of your uh, samjang sauce. Samjang has the fermented beans in it. So it's got a little bit of a kind of miso-y flavor to it. And then you have a half cup of sherry vinegar. Okay. Half a cup of uh, neutral oil. Oh, that's gonna be nice. This one's gonna be a little bit tangy, definitely a little bit spicy, sweet. Right, next? Yeah, sure. 
ingredients. You're doing a great job there mixing. Listen, buddy. <laughs> so when you mix the things, <laughs> you kind of want them to incorporate. It looks like a sun-dried tomato. <laughs> Would you like a fork or a? It's not. It's because you don't have a fork or a. Um, no. Or a. I'm gonna question. Whisk. I'm gonna question the uh, freshness of your gochujang. Is what I'm gonna question. <laughs> I, it is. It is my gochujang. Want to use a fork? It's very sticky. Yes. Some scraping forks. What is that? You're such an important person, Wing. Big deal. Oh. oh my god. That was my mom. <laughs> mom, we still have to make Yumi, you know. Yumi, Yumi's good. I mentioned Yumi's them that good. in my good. last video, and they're like, you have to make your mom's Yumi garlic is noodles. Good. Yumi's like a standby. Stand that by. was my favorite. Okay, this is not happening here. Would you like? Would you like to help? Maybe we should have, um, like, mom used to teach us, like, you take a little bit of hot water and you kind of dilute, dilute it. it. You kind of break down this before you uh, mix it, you know, then. Hindsight, man. Probably whiz it in your magic bullet, but then all your smoothies will taste like goji jong. You're just jealous. You're He's just jealous. on a big smoothie kick every day. Green drinks. Smoothies, green drinks, you know, feel better, free energy. My theory that same, it's a textural thing, you know, texture are in. Are you guys smoothie guys? I don't know. I think smoothies are very yummy, efficient, healthy. I'm not knocking it. I think it's I a great know. thing. So now we're going to make sauce number two, which is going to be a scallion ginger sauce. Look at this. Here's a very high quality cutting board. Listen, <laughs> we're at an Airbnb, we can't complain. I got a real sharp knife for you. Oh gosh. Real sharp knife. <laughs> so kind of you to be thinking of me, darling. So I'm kind. Great. This is the bowl. How, how many scallions do you need? Uh, two and a half cups. Half cup of uh, grated or finely minced uh, fresh ginger. Okay. Peel, peel these. Oh, nice. I know. Did you, did you do the spoon? I did do the spoon. That's like really, really, did. He's trying to one-up me. He's like, do you know the spoon? No, I didn't one-up you. I'm just oh. saying. Oh. Oh. She learned it from me. Oh, yeah, sure. It's green and white, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh. So sharp. <laughs> this is terrible. Life's so sharp. Oh. This is kind of dangerous. Okay. We do what we got to do. You're grating it on the mince, it said, so it doesn't matter. It's like mince, but I mean, usually I, I just can't get it. Sorry, audio. Sorry. Is it enough? Um, what? You don't want me to be, uh... She said, don't be gassiné. <laughs> gassiné, right? Gassiné. Y'all, we're, we're... Don't be cheap. Mom was just telling me the explanation of that. Do you know what gassiné is? No, what is gassiné? I always thought it was like sticky, not enough sticky. Because like, gassiné <laughs> means <laughs> sticky. And then ne means like, not enough. Not enough. No, mom said that that's a type of like candy. Like Burmese candy, gassiné. So if you're gassiné, that means you're sticky. And you hold on to things, that means you're, <laughs> I eat, you're cheap. You're cheap. And that you're, you, you don't want to let things go. Because they stick to you. I'm like, you're oh, cheap. thanks mom. Burmese etymology. Oh, it is making me cry. Damn it. I'm using a new eyeliner. I would, ugh. Is it waterproof? Yes, I don't like usually, thing, right? I don't usually like waterproof eyeliners. I'm trying, my water, oh, oh I can't even speak. My go-to eyeliner. She's just emotional because we don't see each other very often and is so happy to see me. I know, I cry it's, a little bit too. It's true, right, right. right. Gives himself a lot of credit. Anyways, as I was saying, my go-to eyeliner is Kat Von D, but I went to Ulta and they don't carry it, so I got Stila instead. I don't know if I'm impressed with it. Anyways. Do you say something? I'll just drink my beer. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so we're adding the onion. Okay. Quarter cup of grapeseed oil, one and a half teaspoons of soy sauce, half teaspoon of kosher salt. Yeah, or to taste, whatever you guys like. And... Then a little splash, about a teaspoon of vinegar again. Yeah, vinegar. Really that is going to be good. Pull so we're going to shuck some oysters. I had we shucking, my sister was like, "We want you want to go shuck all those oysters?" <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> no, no, I really did. 
do like to shuck oysters, but I like to have the right tool. I have this really beautiful like oyster shucker. So I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> we can't just shuck all of them and just just film. It's no fun. You gotta you have to wait to struggle for a bit. So I left two, so we can both shuck. Oh, isn't this gonna be fun? We're gonna shuck you, with like a butter nice, knife. You can have the nice towel, and we have oh, shuckers because I forgot them at home. Typically, I like to use a towel, and I like to hold it like that, and I go in on the hinge with my oyster shucker. <laughs> now we at this point have shucked 16 of these, so he's going to show me the proper technique with the butter knife. I don't know if there's a proper technique. You just you grip pretty firm on your left hand yeah. or non-dominant hand. You work it in. You, I like to choke pretty low. Yeah. And then twist. Oh, I heard it. Oh. Yeah, that sound, right? He got it. That's the sound. And scrape it off from the top off the lid. You, uh... Yes. Shuck that. Come over here so the camera can see it. <sighs> <Not good. laughs> struggle's real, y'all. The struggle's real. Yeah, oh, oh, I heard it. I heard it. You got it. Got it. You got it, Dean. <sighs> got it. It's coming. That's not like birthing a child or anything here. I had a friend, uh, one of my good friends. He used to always say, you got it, but when I really didn't have it, it really frustrated me. So, as the younger brother, I'd be like, you got it, Dee. You got it. Oh, yes, I do got it, y'all. Oh, yeah. All right, so. Nice. So, like, 10 minutes later, you're caramelized. That looks amazing. I'm gonna double up my bib lettuce. And a little bit of rice? I, yeah, that's good. A bite of rice. Dude, you're, like, annihilating this. That's how are you supposed to do it? Oh, my God, it looks so good. Right? Oh, that right? I want See the, that? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's the best. That's the best. When it's like that's, succulent and fatty. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's a go. Bit, a little bit of crispy. Ding. Some sauce. Kimchi. Kimchi. And then an oyster. Oh, Take my plate. goodness. This one right there. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, can you look at this thing of beauty? Ho, oh, oh. ho. What do you say? Still can't pronounce it. <laughs> Itadakimasu. <laughs> Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. There's a lot going on in there. That's delicious. Mm -hmm. You get the tasty, crunchy, tangy kimchi, and then you've got that really juicy, succulently, minerally oyster on top, and you got that really great, porky, tender. The porky flavor is great, but then you got it. It's so tender. I think a little bit of rice to balance things out. And then you've got the green stuff to make it all healthy and to hold it all together. It's Son, a wrap. Amazing. It's good. Mm. I've never had fresh raw oysters with kimchi before. It's a phenomenal combination because your oyster is soft and succulent and juicy and slippery. And then you've got the big crunchy tangy pickled cabbage in there. Mm -hmm. So good. And you got rice in there too, which is like fluffy and just kind of- Kind of filler and like kind of absorb some of that saltiness because you know, the brininess of the mm -hmm. of the oyster mixed with the salty crust of this kind of heavy um, pork. I'm gonna have some of the pulse sandwich just by itself. Mmm. Okay. Really good, so tender, so stinking good. And the scallions are in there is Awesome. That really brightens things up because you've got the fresh onion and you've got the fresh ginger, which is a little bit spicy. Such a good combination. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. All of this, all this together. It just, it feels kind of decadent when you've got all the layers of different things, but kind of essential too. I feel it's pretty well balanced. Yeah. I'm gonna do another one. Can we just stop shooting so I can just eat dinner now? All right. Sounds like you approve. Dude, we, awesome. Thank you. Boom. Finally, we get to teach me and actually make balsam for me. Thank you so much. This was awesome. This was awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for letting me share it. Try it at home and let us know how you like it and leave a comment below and share this video if you like it. And yeah, let me know if there are any other recipes you'd like to see mm -hmm. we and me make. Although, you, yeah. me is coming up. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank we so much for being here with me and actually teaching me how to make balsam. And thanks so much for joining us today on this video. Hope you guys liked it. Uh, hope you guys learned something. <laughs> Uh, share this video with your friends. Uh, follow uh, my sister on Yay! social media. Like, subscribe below. And we'll see you guys next time. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
to make sure there's anything in my teeth. Not, it's not even that tight. Is that what you do?